Hello, everybody out there in virtual world. We are just about to start. We do have, I think, one or two more families who want to pop on, but um, actually everyone is really on time tonight, so that's very exciting. Um, if you, you, everyone should be able to hear me right now. If you cannot hear me, please go ahead and, and um, check, or you can, there's a little chat box at the bottom of your screen where you can chat me and say if you can't hear. Um, and the chat box is also very useful because when we're done with the presentation, you can chat us questions and we'll read them out loud and we will answer them for you. Um, and if everyone could mute themselves, then we won't hear everybody else and you won't hear all the other people on the, on the virtual. And that's really it. So we're gonna get going. Another thing we like to tell you is that we are in the middle of Midtown Manhattan and Times Square, so sometimes it can be loud here with police cars and ambulances. So if you hear that, it's just part of the fun of working here. So don't be alarmed, it could be very loud. So we're gonna get started. So you'll meet us in a second. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, what we're gonna talk about. So this is the agenda for our open house tonight. We'll talk about introductions of full-time staff, camp basics, who are our campers, the camp program and daily schedule, all the fun things we have at camp. We'll talk about Judaism at camp, what Israel looks like at camp. We'll talk about our staff. Um, we'll take a look, a peek inside a bunk and talk about things that happen inside a bunk. And we'll talk about food, which is, well, Tyler's favorite topic. Definitely. <laughs> we'll talk about special days, communication between camp and Oh, we have somebody who's just popping on now. So welcome. If you just joined us, you're right on time. We have just started our virtual open house on this. On this, um, this is our agenda. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We will most likely cover just about all of your questions during this presentation. So please, I would say, have a piece of paper and a pen so you can write down questions as we go along, and then you can chat them at the end. This is definitely appropriate for future or potential campers to be watching. So I hope that you are and that you have questions at the end too. Um, you're actually the most important people here. So <clears throat> I am also just recovering from a cold, so I'm just letting you know I've got my water, and but, but I'm good for it. So let's go. Who are we? Who are the full-time staff at Sprout Lake? So not joining us tonight is our director, Helene, who has been at Sprout Lake for 20 years. So quite, quite a long time. Um, you'll see me. You might recognize this person. Uh, I'm talking to you right now. I'm Talia. I'm the associate director, and I have been at Sprout Lake for 14 years. So Helene and I have worked together for a very long time. And I'll let him introduce himself here. Hi, everyone. I'm Tyler. I'm the assistant director. Um, I'm about to come up on my two-year anniversary at Sprout Lake, which is really exciting. Um, so yeah, that's me up there. And also, if you ever log on to our website, you see a little chat box that says talk to Tyler. That's really me on the other end. I'm not a robot, I promise. <laughs> and um, someone you may have emailed with today, who if you sign up for camp, you will definitely be in touch with, is Renana, our um, registrar. She helps right, get you registered for camp and deal with camp forms. And she's also coming up on her two-year anniversary. Tyler and Renana started the same day, two years ago. So that's very exciting. Yes. <clears throat> Let's get started. So we're going to do some camp basics. So Sprout Lake is specifically for campers who are entering second through entering eighth grade. So um, we're what we like to call a junior camp. Um, so we're for elementary and middle school kids. Now, you might be wondering what happens after eighth grade. We actually have a, a camp for older kids. It's called Camp Tell Yehuda. And when the kids graduate eighth grade, they can go to Camp Tell Yehuda, and it's it's really nice because it's you know we're really more geared towards younger kids, and they're really more geared towards high school kids. So one of the nice things I would say about Sprout Lake, and I know Tyler would agree, is that there are no there are no high school there's no teenagers at Sprout Lake. So the oldest kids are 12 and 13, and I think it makes such a nice nurturing community. And then after they go to Tell Yehuda, the older kids camp. They, and they grow out of all that teen angst, they can come back and be counselors at Sprout Lake, which is really nice. And the other really nice thing about that older kids camp is that um, we actually have a couple different camps around the country. So we have a camp 
that's just like Sprout Lake in North Carolina. We have one in Texas and one in Wisconsin. And when they all graduate eighth grade, they can all go to Tell Yehuda. So it's really amazing that they can meet kids from not just all over the Northeast, but all over the country, which is really, really cool. <clears throat> uh, here is, if you want to write these down, these are session dates. Now these, we do two, three and a half week sessions, generally. Um, those are our main sessions. Now we do offer some shorter one week and two week sessions for younger kids. So entering second, third and fourth grade um, would have an option to do a one week or a two week session. Now those um, you can definitely chat us about later. They are the first week and first two weeks of each session. So you can probably deduce by the starting dates what dates they are. They do fill up very fast. In fact, I think our second session one week programs, both for boys and girls, are already full. Um, we have some room in first session, but we can talk about if we're opening up spots and waiting lists and stuff like that. But uh, the short programs definitely fill up. So I would suggest jumping on that. Where is Sprout Lake, you might be wondering, since you're not really visiting us right now and we're in Manhattan. So Sprout Lake is in a little town called Burbank, New York, which is about 20 miles east of Poughkeepsie. From <clears throat> Midtown, I would say it's like an hour and a half. Bergen County, an hour and a half. Um, Brooklyn, maybe more like two hours. It depends. It obviously, I mean, traffic can really vary. But it's not, it's not too far. It's located in a beautiful Hudson Valley right off the Taconic Parkway, about eight miles off the Taconic Parkway. That's where we're located. And this is a sort of cartoon bird's eye view of what camp looks like. Um, and we are going to look at all of these, all of these uh, buildings and take a tour, if you will, <laughs> of camp. I love these. They're so fun. You feel like you're talking to yourself, but a lot of people. This is our, um, in Hebrew, we call it the Chadarochel, or dining room. This is the front of it, and you'll see the grassy area around it. We call it the main bunk area, or the MBA. Um, and in a different, when you see a different sort of perspective, you'll see that the bunks sort of surround the, the dining room. And the MBA is a nice grassy area where you'll see kids like hanging out, throwing a Frisbee, throwing a football. A lot, of, a lot happening in the NBA. Let's go inside the Hotter Elbow. And this is where we eat. We'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about food later. Tyler will talk about it. But we eat together um, with, as a bunk. We serve the food family style. Our dining room is air conditioned, which is great. And actually, this is an old picture because we redid the floors. So if anyone's coming to visit, you'll see new floors. This is our tennis court, which is brand new tennis courts. Um, this is our gymnast, our gym where we do gymnastics. So we just got this. Um, what is it called? A tumble track. <clears throat> this is called a tumble track. Um, and we have also in our gym, not in this picture, but we have bars and a beam and some other awesome things. Actually, you'll see it later in the presentation. This is what we call the horsha or the grove. This is a nice gathering area where camp gathers all together every night after dinner. We sing a song together. We do performances here. We sing. Um, so a lot of different things happen in the horse shop. All of camp can fit in the horse shop. You'll see as I'm talking and as Tyler's talking, we use a lot of Hebrew words. It's just part of sort of daily camp life. This is our studios building. Uh, this is where we have uh, maybe dance. Um, maybe uh, martial arts, maybe um, video making, jewelry making. It's a multi-purpose building. This is our synagogue um, where we have, uh, we'll, we'll talk, and, all, and where, where we'll have to be low in the morning, and we'll talk more about that. And also we have lots of performances here, because look at us, a sound system and lights and a stage, and it's nice to be outdoors, but in a covered place. Basketball court. <clears throat> Soccer fields, Gaga. I hope any of the campers watching this know about Gaga. So we actually have two places to play Gaga, two Gaga, what do we call them, Gaga pits? Gaga pits, yes. Two Gaga pits at camp. These are our furry friends, the animals. We have what we call a peanut high or a petting zoo. So we have three alpacas, two goats, 
right? Mm -hmm. What else? Chickens, ducks, a sheep named Clarence. You got a, lot, a real eclectic mix of personalities in animals. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and this is the main bunk area. So this is sort of a different view where you can see what the outside of the bunks look like, and we'll go inside a bunk soon. This is our brand new aquatic center with a water slide. So one pool has a zero front um, entry. So you can um, you know, walk right in and the other pool is better for learning how to dive and for swimming lessons and stuff like that. So, and we can fit all of camp in the pool. It's great on a really hot day, so much fun. This is sort of, this is our newer pool. So it's a, uh, like I said, the zero entry and it's just a better view of it and a better view of the water slide and someone having the best time on the water slide. <laughs> the water slide is so much fun. It's huge. It's when we were talking about building it and then they brought in and built it, it was it's really big, way bigger than I thought. So it's so much fun. Um, and you have to put your arms like this and then you go yep. really fast. So lay as flat as you can. That's, that's the secret. So before I let Tyler talk, <laughs> So that, those are our facilities. Um, you know, I always like to talk about who the campers are that come to Sprout Lake because I often get this question. Um, and I want to talk about it in two different ways. So um, in terms of geographically, the kids come from as south as Maryland and as north as Boston and really mostly from the tri-state area, from New York, New Jersey, from Connecticut, from eastern Pennsylvania, like Philadelphia. Um, but they're really coming from all over the Northeast, and there isn't really one, I would say, major town they're all coming from. We have kids from all over the place. Um, and then, not just geographically, but in terms of Jewish backgrounds, our campers really come from a diverse, diverse range of Jewish backgrounds. Some kids, this is their literal first Jewish experience going to a Jewish camp, and some are very observant at home. Maybe keep Shabbat, maybe keep kosher, go to Jewish day school. So we really sort of gather all those kind of Jews together under one, and at, at, you know, under one tent, I would say, and make everyone feel comfortable. So that gives you an idea of who our campers are and where they're from. Um, yeah, Tyler, I think is going to give you um, some of the fun things. Yes. What does the schedule look like? What do you do every day at Camp Sprout Lake? So here it is. So this is a little snapshot of what an average day looks like at camp. Um, I'm going to explain what the different types of activities are and what uh, the difference between an elective is and what a community activity is. But in the beginning, we all wake up together. Um, everybody goes to flag raising where they'll do uh, like a bunk song or a bunk cheer just to get the morning started. Then everybody heads up to breakfast um, where we eat, like Talia said before, as a community, everybody eats together. Then everybody heads down to a morning service at the BK that you saw in the picture before. Um, after that, everybody heads back up to the bunk to clean up. And clean up is a huge part of camp, and the kids get really excited about it. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, and then the day's worth of activities really start. So the day is split into two different types of activities. There are elective-based activities, and there are community activities. So the community activities are the time for campers to experience every part of camp. They get to go around and do sports, like uh, arts and crafts and uh, performance arts and literally everything we have to offer in camp. Swimming, that's a huge one, swimming. And then the other half of the day, there'll be in elective programs where uh, they'll choose in the beginning of camp, but we'll have a huge fair with all of our different offerings and we have like 20 plus different things for them to choose from and we'll go through those. Um, and then they write them all down and then we figure out what their schedule is going to look like every day and they'll get to go to these activities that they're really interested in every single day, um, which is really awesome. Um, and we make changes to them if kids aren't so happy in their electives, but we really try to tailor the schedule and make it so every kid is having the experience that they want at camp. And this is just sort of, I know it's like a spreadsheet, so it's a little boring, but, <laughs> but, um, this is um, sort of a sort of a idea of what it, how we split the day for each age group. So, um, right. Yeah. Here. So in the morning, our younger kids are in their first three elective periods, while the older campers are in their community activities. And then after lunch and rest time, that switches. Got it. Everyone's nodding. Great. We're gonna. <laughs> you're probably wondering what are the electives we offer and what are the community activities. Well, we'll tell you. So woodworking, which is part of uh, Omanu, our arts program, so that is an elective. 
Um, and then within it, and we're going to go through these pictures also, um, we have a ton of different arts and crafts based electives. Um, this is our ropes course. This is, you can see we have a map of Israel, which is awesome because the kids will get to point and put different signs in different areas of Israel and it makes it just a big giant climbing challenge for them. Um, this is our zip line. I know campers are really excited about that. Talia's done the zip line before. I've done the zip line before. It's amazing. Um, this is also part of our ropes course. This is our, our low ropes or challenge activities. We have uh, several different uh, low rope team building exercises throughout our, uh, our challenge area. Um, and it's really emphasizing community building and making sure that there's a, a nice bump community. So we do that right in the beginning of camp. This is, uh, these are our, our high ropes elements. So at, so at the top, of, there's a big circle around the top of our rock wall that has these different high elements and they're a little bit more, some are more challenging than others. Um, and it's a great personal accomplishment for campers to get up there and really try to get through the different challenge challenges. This is archery, which is another one of our very popular electives. Um, our, our archery instructor, Steve, has been with us for years. He's great. He really shows campers uh, the proper form and the proper techniques. Sometimes he'll bring in fruit for the campers to, to aim at. Um, and so archery is really, really fun. This is ceramics, which is one of our most popular electives. Uh, the campers really learn the entire process from learning uh, how to work with clay and build something up on a wheel, then to glazing it in our kiln and uh, and painting it and really taking something nice home with them. Um, and they come home with these amazing, amazing projects. This is sewing, which is another one of our elective uh, options. So we'll have campers uh, doing hand sewing and we also have sewing machines as well. This is printmaking, which is another activity in, uh, in Omanu in arts. Um, and this is like art du jour, so making different things out of ceramics and then uh, out of clay and then painting them. Uh, this is another view at the inside of the Bay Am where we have our gymnastics. So you can see we have mats down. There are the there are the different um, uh, rolling uh, I forget what they're called the, the big rolling octagons for them to practice their their handsprings and, and different things on. Um, and then we have beams there as well. And a bar. And a bar, yes. So this is part of our soccer field. Soccer is one of the is a very popular sport in camp. Um, our instructors have been really great in the past, and, uh, and soccer is a lot of fun. More soccer. Uh, here's our basketball court, which was recently refinished as well. Um, the court's really nice. We use this court for a lot of different things, but basketball is definitely one of them. Tennis on our brand new tennis courts. We had an amazing tennis instructor last year, and the kids absolutely loved to, to play tennis. I don't think there was a time during the day where there wasn't many kids out there playing. Hockey, which will also uh, put up different areas. It's a movable <coughs> hockey rink, so we can use it wherever we need to at the time. Um, so here you can see some of our older boys playing hockey. Frisbee. Uh, frisbee is really popular, whether it's just throwing and catching with a friend on the main bunk area or playing a game of Ultimate Frisbee. And we have really great uh, staff that will show them the proper form and techniques, and, and really they'll play some, some great games of Ultimate Frisbee. Swimming. So swimming is a huge part of Camp Sprout Lake, as you saw with our pools. Um, our younger campers will go swimming uh, every day. They'll have swim instruction. Um, and then we also have different uh, pool electives, where there be water polo or pool games or swim team. We really make it so a camper can get in the pool as many times as the day as they want. Uh, so this is, a, I, I love this picture because you can see there's a really excited kid in the back. This is part of the, the, the writing of like the camp show, which is, a, which is one of our electives. So they're, they're rehearsing, they're going over lines, they're deciding how they want to act things out. Um, and, uh, and then you can see they get really excited about it. Video making. So video making is a really great elective to choose because um, not only is it just going out and recording things, but campers will actually write a script and act it out and perform the entire thing, and then they'll edit it and then show it in front of the whole camp. So they get to see, all the other campers get to see their hard work throughout the session. Uh, this is dance, uh, Riku as we call it, and I know we'll talk about this more later, but everybody at Camp Scarlet Lake dances. Uh, this is songwriting, which is really popular, and just like video, so campers will, will create their own songs, and we have great song leaders to help them, and then we'll perform them with instruments on stage in front of all of them. This is jewelry, which takes place in that studios building we mentioned before. 
Um, so we have a lot of different jewelry pro project, projects that they can make, and we always come up with new ideas to bring to camp with uh, how to make more fun jewelry projects. This is cooking, which is definitely one of the most popular electives and my favorite one to go visit. Uh, campers, we do a lot of Israeli and Jewish themed foods, so uh, and so there's, there's some lessons behind it, and the campers really learn how to make something, what the significance of it is, and then of course they get to eat it at the end. Um, and it's, it's really a very popular elective to come and do. So this is gardening, which is part of our outdoor area and camp. Um, so campers will tend to the garden and pick things, and then we'll use the things that they grow um, in, in the cooking elective, or, or we'll, put, we'll have it out for campers to eat. We, they get to experience the, the harvest, and it's really, really nice. So this is part of uh, more of our, uh, our our outdoor area. So this is on a this is like a nature walk. So we'll have campers uh, learning about the different elements of the woods and, and making sure they go out and, and proper protection. And uh, it's really great that they, they learn a tremendous amount. Uh, this is the last part. As you saw the farm animals before, and I think we'll see another picture there. But we also have other smaller animals. This past summer we had. Uh, in addition to our alpacas and our sheep and our goat and our ducks and our chickens, we had some hamsters, uh, we have a bunny, and we also had a tortoise. Uh, and everybody loved to come play with a tortoise. Um, but yeah, so you can see campers really can go in there and, and play and, and, uh, and, and get to have fun with the animals and then stay on the outside and feed them as well. So this is yoga, which takes place in the studio building. Um, martial arts, which we had last summer, and it was very successful. Campers loved it. Um, we had a great instructor who really knew his stuff, um, and it was it was very great. Uh, this is rocket making, which is one of my favorite things to do in camp. I uh, I I guess facilitate all of the rocket making at camp. Um, the, our younger campers will all get to build their rockets from scratch. Um, they get to decorate them how, however they want, and then. They get to go fire them. Uh, it's so much fun. They go about a thousand feet in the air, and everybody cheers, and they all come down, and it's really awesome. I think that's it. I think that's it. <clears throat> so that was the the many, many, many activities and electives and community activities that we have at Sprout Lake. And the great part about our schedule is that you get to do both. So the kids get three, the campers get three periods of choice, and they'll do what they want to do every day at the same time. And then and then the other half of the day, they'll be visiting different activities to, to try them because they might like something they don't they wouldn't ordinarily think they'd like. So um, we found that it makes a perfect balance for the campers. Um, so you can start thinking of what activities you would be choosing. So I'm going to talk a little bit briefly about Judaism at camp and how that looks in Israel at camp and how that looks. So um, I was talking a little bit before about how all of our kids come from very diverse Jewish backgrounds, which is really um, fascinating. It's, it's fascinating. It's, it's amazing because they all sort of come together and learn from each other. Just to give you an idea, a third of our campers come from a Jewish day school background and two thirds don't. That was the survey that we did after this summer. So that's just sort of factual. Um, we come down after breakfast every day for about, I would say about 20 minutes, and we do a shacharit service. Um, you can see the campers here sitting in the BK. We call it the BK, the Beit Knesset, um, doing our shacharit service. It's very kid-friendly. We use guitars and really fun tunes, and sometimes we even use other instruments like trumpets and drums. Um, we try to make it very engaging. Um, the kids make up hand movements to the prayers. A lot of times kids will say to us, like, why can't it be like this at home? Why can't it be like this at synagogue? Um, we have our own CDR, so here it is. You can see it. Um, it is made specifically for our camp. It has um, Hebrew. It has the Hebrew transliteration. It has translation. So, And also it has poems and stories and pictures. So... There are kids that don't necessarily connect with prayer, and that's totally okay. They will definitely find something to look at, or something to read, or something to entertain them in the studio, which is really nice. Um, we, we, and this is another picture of our studio. I love this picture. Um, Shabbat is another really special time at camp. So on Friday, um, we encourage the campers to wear white, and that, that also comes on, your, on a packing list that you would get. Um, 
before the summer starts, you would notice them white clothes. So we don't force the campers to, we encourage them to. It makes this like nice sort of pure Shabbat feeling. So we all gather together for Kabbalat Shabbat. We walk down to the synagogue together. Um, we, the counselors do a, a Kabbalat Shabbat sort of song and dance and silly song for the kids. And then we watch a video. Um, we have a videographer at camp and they are always every second of the day taking videos of what's going on and they show a video we call it Sikum HaShavua like a video of the week like what happened that week and the campers love you know finding themselves in the video and the weeks go really fast so they sort of sometimes forget what they did so it's fun for them to see what they did and then we bring in Shabbat together as a community um, we light the candles together and from when we light the candles on Friday night to when we do Havdalah on Saturday night, we are Shomer Shabbat at camp. Um, and what does that mean? And, and I would say most of our campers, the majority of our campers, are not used to being Shomer Shabbat at home. It's not something their family does. But I think they like it at camp because I think it separates sort of every, you know, for six days they're doing the same thing. They're doing the zip line and the water slide and they're, you know, for six days, and then that seventh day, we have a, we relax. We have a totally different schedule, um, and we do, instead of doing normal electives, we do Shabbat electives. We do bunk free choice. We do lots of pool time. We do some sports tournaments. We do, um, we can still go to the climbing wall. Um, there are certain things we still do on Shabbat, but we make it feel like a different day. Um, and... Friday night, you know, after we have, after we do the Kabbalah Shabbat service, we all go up to the um, dining room together, to the Hadarochel. We have a traditional Shabbat dinner of chicken and rice and potatoes and even matzah ball soup, which I know is crazy, but we have that. And then we have apple turnovers for, for um, dessert. And then we have a, a very loud, like very, we use the word ruach, like a lot of spirit, a very loud song session after Friday night dinner where everyone is really up and, and excited, and then we go back down to the BK, where this picture is for what we call an Onek Shabbat, where the staff do a silly skit or something, stupid human tricks, or a, a, a they, what we call Friday Night Live, like some Saturday Night Live, and they like sort of make the kids laugh by doing little skits. Um, and then Saturday morning, we wake up late, and we have a really special breakfast on Saturday morning. Um, Normally during the week we have regular cereal, but on Saturday morning we have sugar cereal. So on Saturday morning we do have Fruit Loops and Captain Crunch and Cocoa Krispies and Cocoa Puffs and all of those things. I know my kids love that. <laughs> and we also have cake for breakfast. So um, it's a way for them to get excited about Shabbat and to know that it's coming and to be excited about their special breakfast. Um, we do have a service on Shabbat morning. Um, I would say it's about 45 minutes. We do a short Torah service with three Aliyot. Uh, campers can read Torah, sometimes staff read Torah. Um, and then after Shabbat services, we have, um, I'm going to skip too fast, we have a little kiddish with grape juice and usually black and white cookies, which are delicious. And then we have a whole day of the things I was talking about previously, like pool and ropes horse, and we can visit the animals and um, other Shabbat activities, and then after dinner, we have Havdalah, um, when it starts getting dark, where we all gather together on the basketball court, and we say bye to Shabbat together as a camp community, and then it's a tradition at Sprout Lake that after we say goodbye to Shabbat, everyone does Israeli dancing, so this is a picture of Israeli dancing, um, and we have dance instructors that stand with microphones and stand up on a picnic table, so they sort of teach the dances to the kids. Um, and everyone really enjoys it. A lot of people will say, like, oh, no, that's my, – my child will never dance. But at Sprout Lake, it's fun. It's cool. Everyone does these Israeli dances. Um, so that's really nice. Um, so that's Shabbat. And then <clears throat> another thing I think that sets us apart, maybe from other camps, is our, our connection to Israel. People say – and Helene, our director, likes to say that no matter where you are in camp, you can see, a, a, you can see an Israeli flag. Um, this is our flag raising. We raise the Israeli flag and we sing Hatifa, the Israeli national anthem. Um, the kids 
we're not political when it comes to Israel. We don't say this is right and this is wrong. We just teach the kids facts, you know, like this is the geography of Israel. This is the, these are the people of Israel. This is, um, this is the food that they eat. Um, it's very, it's, it's creating, you know, it's working to help the kids create a connection to Israel. Um, and the biggest way they do that is through their counselors because we bring, and we'll talk a little bit more about staff later, but we bring, um, about, I would say 25 to 30 counselors from Israel. We try to put one in every bunk to really bond and connect with the kids. Um, and they bring things like their flags and their army uniforms and lots of different things to sort of get the kids excited about, about Israel and their experiences with Israel. Um, there's some of our Israeli staff just being silly. <laughs> um, staff? You want to talk about staff? Sure. Tyler uh, wants to talk to you. Yes. Uh, so staff, uh, we like to say that we have the best staff in the whole camping game, and I think I think it holds pretty true. Um, a majority of our staff members actually went to Sprout Lake growing up, so Helene and Talia have known them since they were campers, um, which is really great. When when they are ever encountering any little issues, they can say, "Well, I know you did that when you were a little <laughs> kid too." Um, but it's great they come back with this mission and want to give back to these kids and want to give back to the next generation of Sprout Lake campers which is amazing. Um, we'll have them returning year after year uh, throughout, throughout, throughout college and sometimes beyond. Um, and they really are there for the kids. That's why they come back and the kids really look up to them. Um, and you can see like the, the, the campers absolutely love their staff members. And I think the next picture is my favorite. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite pictures I've ever seen at, at Camp Sparrow Lake. It's just a camper wanting to be just like his counselor, so decided to dress up exactly like him for dinner. Uh, and I love it. Um, so that's the majority of our staff, and we'll also, like Talia just mentioned, we'll also pull a lot of our staff from Israel. Helene, our director, will go to the Jewish agency in Israel every year and personally hire them all, personally interview them all, which is great. Um, they bring such a, a new element to camp and come with new ideas and this new spirit and this wanting to be a part of our camp community, which is really special. And then we'll have a lot of them coming back year after year. We have some Israelis who have been with us for decades. Um, so they really get something special out of this place and they bring so much more to camp. Um, so yeah, so that's the, that's our counselor staff, our bunk staff. Apart from that, we also have our support staff. So this is a picture of our, of our infirmary. Um, we have nurses and a doctor on site at all times. Um, if the kid's not feeling well, they'll come up here and, uh, or even if they need a little TLC, we'll make sure that they're taken care of. Um, our, our nurses uh, give out meds whenever needed, um, and they're there to always help out. Um, we also, so here's one of our, here's one of our, uh, our rooms for uh, an exam. An exam, thank you. <laughs> uh, if, if a camper needs to and be checked on by the doctor, they'll come in here. Counselors will bring them up there. They're always escorted up. So it's a, uh, and it's a really beautiful building. It's a very nice, clean, sterile building, which is perfect. This is our gate, which brings us to the topic of security. Um, it's, this is actually a little bit of an older picture. We actually have a security booth. We have a security guard on our property 24-7 the entire summer. Um, they're there checking everybody in who comes into camp. They control who comes in and out of the gate. Um, and they also do rounds around camp. So they're making sure that we are living in a safe environment at all times. Um, and, and, they're, and they always have communication with us. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we have security at all times. And there are cameras. At the gate and yes, there are cameras everywhere camp. around camp, and this is the only way in and out of camp. There is no other way. Um, so that's been this is, will be this will be our third summer having 24/7 security. We used to only have it at night, and now we have it all the time. Um, so that's a little bit about our staff. Um, now we're going to go inside a bunk and talk a little bit about um, what bunks look like. So all of our bunks have bunk beds. And um, actually, parents drop off their campers on the first day of camp, and the parents are actually not allowed in the bunk. Um, the campers are allowed in, but um, they're not allowed to choose their bunk until most, almost all of the kids have arrived, because then they decide you know, who's getting a top bunk, who's getting a bottom bunk, who wants to sleep near the door, who wants to sleep near this counselor or the bathroom, so they decide as a community where they're going to sleep. Um, and then they actually come in and the counselors help them unpack their stuff and make their beds and um, it's sort of their first time acclimating into camp and we want them to know where they put their underwear 
We want them to know where they put their socks. So that's why the counselors help them do it and the parents actually don't, don't help them unpack. We do everything for them. Um, and a couple other things about the bunk. So uh, showers. So we do um, require that the kids shower once a day, every day. So we split the kids up into morning showers, afternoon showers, and night showers. And they sign up for whatever time of day they want to take a shower. Um, and that's how we know they're showering every day. Um, laundry. So laundry is something that we do for our campers twice a session. So it's about the first like 10 days of camp and then the next 10 days of camp, we take care of it fully. We have a laundry service that gives each camper a laundry bag. We, they pick it up, they, the campers put all their laundry in it, they set it outside the bunk, the laundry service comes and picks it up and brings it back 24 hours later. They're folded, smelling very good. Um, our one week campers, we do not do laundry because they're only there for a week and our two week campers, we do laundry one time and our regular session campers get laundry done twice. That's how we do laundry. Um, the, the campers will become in the bunk twice a day and have like, uh, or well, they'll come in the bunk a lot, but they'll have um, cleanup time after, like Tyler was talking about, Nick Ion, we call it. They have about a 45 minute after, 45 minute um, period after breakfast to clean up their bunk. So their first thing they do is they make their bed. They do it, what this, this boy is doing, fold their clothes, make their shelves look good, make sure they can find all their belongings. And then they have usually a job, like a job at the bunk for the whole bunk, like um, sweeping or, you know, doing sinks or making sure the clothesline is, is, is um, you know, cleared off of dry clothes. So, and then they have somebody who, we have somebody who comes and inspects the bunk every day and gives a score and the bunk with the highest score at the end of each week gets an ice cream party before Shabbat. So that's cleanup time. And then this, these two um, campers are in Minucha, which is rest time, which is a, a period of an hour after lunch where campers can, you know, chill out, um, write letters. This is when campers get their mail. So um, these campers are writing letters. We require the campers to write twice a week. So every Wednesday and Sunday, we'll do what we call a ticket meal where we give the campers a pre-addressed stamped postcard that will send home to you and we, we they have to hand it to us on their way to dinner to get into dinner so we are personally guaranteeing they are writing to you twice a week sometimes the mail takes a long time you parents have to write we say you should write every single day you can write and email and i'll talk about the email system in a little bit um, but campers love absolutely love receiving mail it is so important to them um, I even write my own child who's at camp with me because she really wants to get letters. It's just so much fun. This is also, um, I we started putting this on the packing list last year to tell parents to send their kids with cards. Remember, and we'll talk about electronics, we, we don't have screens at camp. There are no screens. There's no video games. There's no television. So this is like writing letters, reading comic books, reading books, playing cards with each other. So like all the card games you can think of, set, Uno, Magic, Pokemon, like regular cards. I'm telling you, any card game you can think of, the kids are playing it. And they're having Bananagrams, Rummy Q, I'm telling you, it's crazy, it's great. And we have tons of board games at camp too. We, every summer we refresh our board games and the kids can get a board game from the Hutterojal and come bring it back to their bunk if they want. Oh, this is the what I was talking about with the Nick I own, with the cleanup. So each bunk has one of these sort of charts that says what, um, you know, what job they are that day to help keep the bunk clean. And I just, you, I like this picture because it <clears throat> sort of shows everything in the bunk at the same time. It shows, um, I'm gonna use my mouse, it shows, you know, here's the shower lists right here, who's morning, afternoon, and night showers. You can see laundry folded on a bed. You can see, um, the bunk contract. So the bunk contract is something that the campers do on the first night of camp and they decide how they're going to live together as a community, how they're going to respect each other, and they really abide by that. Here's their work wheel for Nick Ion. And this says what, what they need for each activity. Do you have your towel? Do you have your sunscreen? Stuff like that. Um, we apply sunscreen twice a day, or we have the kids do it once during um, Minucha. 
um, after lunch and once after breakfast. And they can also apply it in the morning when they wake up. So it could even be three times a day. But we're very good at encouraging the kids to, to wear sunscreen. They also need to have hats and water bottles with them. And we'll give them a water bottle, but they should bring an extra few water bottles and a hat because it does get hot. Um, this is just a close-up of a bunk contract that I really like. You know, and talking about respecting each other and the bunk community and speaking respectfully and acting respectfully. So um, I think it's a really nice picture. Um, like I said, hats and water bottles. We're very serious about hats and water bottles. We will provide each camper with a water bottle um, that says Sprout Lake on it, but we would encourage you to send several extras because sometimes they get left around camp in different places and it takes a day until they make their way back to the camper. Um, but they always make their way back. And the part all the kids have been waiting for, no electronics. So we're a no screens camp, um, no iPads, no even no Kindles, no video games, no DS, like no nothing. Um, the only thing we will allow is a small um, music player. It's not like what we've okayed here, like an iPod shuffle or one of these sort of cheap MP3 players from Target just to listen to music. We know that some campers, um, find it necessary to listen to music like before they go to bed. But we wouldn't even encourage these music players because they can get lost, they can get stepped on, they're really small. And like, like I was saying before, lots of playing cards, lots of playing games, lots of reading, exchanging, you know, books. Um, it's really just like camp used to be when I went to camp. Like just good old fashioned fun. So uh, no screens. Um, and it's, it's a very good um, break. I think from screens for the kids. Sometimes they'll walk up to things and try to swipe at it or press it, or we'll see them like texting under the table, like air texting because they're trying to, you know, deprogram. But it's very nice. So that's a little bit about the bunk. Um, food. Time food. To okay. About food. Yeah, my favorite part about camp. I love talking about food at camp because any parents who might have gone to camp as a kid and maybe hated the food, I think we have really, really amazing food at camp. Um, so the important thing to talk about, I know we said it before, but just want to reiterate that we eat as a community at camp. Everybody eats at the same time. There are staggered meals for different ages. We like the idea of having one centralized community so everybody eats together. Um, we eat family style, so our staff members will go up to the window and get the different options for food and bring them to the table, um, which, is, which is amazing. We are a kosher camp. So uh, we have different dairy and meat meals. So generally our breakfast and our dinner will be dairy and uh, lunch will be meat. Um, and then we'll have snacks throughout the day as well. But just so the basics of what food looks like at camp. So for breakfast, there'll always be a hot option. You can see waffles in this picture. We'll have eggs or French toast um, or maybe just egg sandwiches. We'll have a lot of one different hot option every morning. There's always going to be an oatmeal or maybe like a cream of wheat, something like that in the morning. And then we have a big fruit bar in the morning that has yogurt on it. It has granola on it. It has a lot of different fresh fruit. It even has Israeli salad on it in the morning. Um, and so campers will go up and, and prepare a nice plate for themselves. Uh, it's important for us to have healthy options for kids at all times. So having a salad bar like this in the morning is really great for that. Um, Lunch, like I said. Oh, cereal. Oh, cereal, yes. We always have cereal, but not sugared cereal, because that's only on Shabbat. <laughs> but yes, we always have different cereal options, whether it be Chex or, or Cheerios. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, so for lunch, lunch is our meat meal of the day. Um, you can see we have french fries there. We'll have things like chicken nuggets or maybe barbecue, which is the best meal in camp, in my opinion. Um, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Um, we like to have a big meal that... Uh, for lunch, so it can give the kids energy throughout the rest of the day. Um, and then also, there will be a salad bar, so there'll be different veggie options and fruit options and salad options. And there'll also be protein options up there, so things like beans and chickpeas and hummus. Um, variety is always important to us in making sure that every camper finds more than one thing that they enjoy to eat at every meal. Here's barbecue, we do it outside. Um, there's hamburgers and hot dogs and chicken and watermelon. Um, it's really a fun time for them to sit and, and not be in the dining room for a meal. You get to sit outside. Um, and here's an overview of our salad bar. You can see there's tons of vegetables and there's salad dressings that our, that our, uh, our kitchen team actually make in house. And there's also tuna fish and hummus and so on, plenty of different options. Dinner will have things like quesadillas or pizza 
or uh, mac and cheese, um, different options like that, also with a very similar salad bar. So um, it's really important, like I said before, for us to have big variety. We're very good with picky eaters. We're good at helping them try things. We're good at helping them discover new things they may like. And, uh, and we're always helping them making sure they're finding more than one thing that they eat. We're also great with dietary restrictions. We can handle campers who are gluten-free or dairy-free. We are a nut-free camp, which is, uh, which is very helpful. Um, we don't have peanut butter in camp. We have a peanut butter substitute, which, is, which we think is the best one that they mm -hmm. make. Um, so we are very adept at handling all uh, dietary restrictions that a camper may have. And if you have specific questions about your specific camper, please let us know, and uh, we'll tell you how we can handle those dietary needs. We also have two snacks throughout the day, so the campers will have a morning snack, usually like a fresh fruit or something like that. Then the afternoon we'll have a little bit of a saltier snack to encourage them to drink more water, so that could be something like pretzels or veggie straws, something like that. We also have fresh fruit set up around camp throughout the day, so when a camper is walking to an activity, they can just grab an apple or a banana or another hand fruit just so they can have something along the way if they're hungry. Yep, I think the food is very good. So special days at camp. So we have, a, apart from our normal schedule of electives and community activities, we have a few special days that where camp looks a little bit different. So you can see all these campers are in the same color here. This is our Maccabi Ah, which is our color war day. Uh, we do a breakout the night before where they figure out what teams they're going to be in, and they sign up for their different activities. And then the next day, from the moment they wake up until the very end of the day, it's tons of different activities, and it's everything from sports to performance arts-based activities to dance activities to swimming activities. Campers are not uh, campers can sign up for whatever way they want to help contribute to their team. Uh, there's cake decorating. Um, there's there's a million different activities, and we make sure that every camper is feeling strong about what they want to participate in. And at the end of it, we do have a winner, um, and. And after the team wins, we all come together and sing a song and kind of come back to that one camp community again, which is a really positive and nice way to end that day. It's the best. It's really fun. Day. It's really fun. Um, so the other, well, one of the other special programs and days we have at camp um, is uh, is Maddie Now. And Maddie Now is an acronym that stands for Making a Difference in My Own Way. All of our campers will learn about uh, different com community service op opportunities and learn about different charities and organizations. Um, and then they will all get to go out of camp and actually go to these specific areas and, and volunteer their time and help out local communities. So here you can see campers getting ready at a soup kitchen uh, to feed people in need. Um, we have campers going to prepare sandwiches and picking food at a community garden to go to people who can't afford food. We'll have campers visit um, visit senior centers um, and go host and organize food drives, they get really excited about giving back to the community and we like to provide as many different ways as they can. Part of this Maddie Now program is we have a, a Maddie Now fair at the end of the camp. So all of our campers will come to camp with five single dollars that we will collect and then when we have this fair we'll give them to them. And we have different booths set up which our older campers help prepare of all of these different organizations that they are passionate about and they care about and they get to explain what these organizations do, and our campers actually get to donate their single dollars to whichever organizations that they are interested in, and it's really, and these organizations really appreciate it. We raise a lot of money that goes to very good need for them. So uh, you can see one of the tables here uh, from one of our past Maddie Now Fairs. Uh, another one of our special days is Yom Kef, which is really like day of fun. So we send all of our campers out <coughs> to a local water park, they spend the entire day there, they get to go on all of the rides, they get to really have an amazing time out of camp. Um, and uh, so there's tons of water slides and, and lazy rivers, there's everything from the very adventurous person that I really want to go on a slide to the, I just want to relax and stay in the wave pool or stay in the lazy river. Um, so it's really a, a tremendously fun day. The last um, special days that we have at camp are called Teul, where all of our campers will go out on a local hike um, we'll go to state parks and different, different really beautiful views that you can see here. Um, and we'll have our guides go out beforehand, our staff go beforehand to, to, to go through the whole hike and, and plan out specific routes. And the kids get really excited about it. They pack their own lunches um, and they get to spend the whole day out going on this hike. And it's, we have games along the way that the staff prepare for them. So it makes it a really exciting experience for them. Uh, you can see more of them 
it's a, it's really a fun day. I went on one of the team lean this year, and it was a it was a, it was a great hike, and uh, the kids definitely did a lot better than I did. Don't listen to him. He came back and was like, "I'm so tired." <laughs> That's what I said. I said they did way, way better. better than me. Really <laughs> um. Okay, so we're almost done. So I just want to give you a little bit, like, sort of maintenancey type logistics stuff. So, um, this is what. Once you're registered for camp, this is what um, your account may look like. Um, you'll see here for camp stamps, um, updating address, financial information. This is these forms and documents is where you would click and get all the forms you need for camp, like all the health forms and the bump requests and all the sort of forms that come out. We usually The forms usually come out late winter, early spring, and they're due back in May. So you have usually a few months to get them done. Um, this is the um, what what our photos look like online. So we upload photos. I mean, we upload photos how many times? We upload photos. Well, we do an upload twice a day. We we'll probably upload like a thousand photos a day. We try to guarantee one picture of every camper every day. So we do have two photographers on camp that are running around getting photos of everybody. Um, so this is what it looks like when you log in to see the photos. We only do it twice a day. We only upload once after lunch and once after dinner. So you can't like refresh all day long. We stop the madness. Um, this is what it looks like to email your camper. So you can actually email your camper. If you're not a snail mail person, you can email them every day. And we print it out and put it in their mailbox, which is great. And then you can also request down here, if you see, I would like a handwritten e-letter reply. So um, you can do that. And then it prints an extra page with your email, a blank page that your camper can write on, and then put if they put it in the mailbox, well, we fax it and it gets scanned to your email. So it's a little bit, I think some families like it because it's a little bit of a faster way to communicate with your um, camper. A few end things. This is our, early, we do have an early bird registration. It's ending next Wednesday on October 31st, um, cheaper prices. So um, it's just a good thing to know if you're definitely considering camp. We also have coming up um, net and two Sundays. So November 11th, we're having a fall festival at camp. It's going to have like blow ups and a petting zoo and face painting and sports and arts and crafts and hay rides. And we'll give a tour of camp. So we're hoping to get, you know, we already have over 100 people coming. We're hoping to just get as many people up at camp. And this would be a good opportunity for interested families to see camp. So fall festival, November 11th. And I think we're done talking. What we'll do is stick around for a minute to see um, sort of if anybody has any questions, we will read them out loud. Um, there's a little chat box at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, type them and we'll read them. Um, usually we're pretty good and we don't have that many questions, <laughs> but, um, you know, if any of the campers have questions, like even if you think it's like the silliest question, we can totally answer it. And this is like a cooking show where you have to keep talking. <laughs> keep talking away. Or there's nothing more to say. I don't see any questions. I hope, I hope that, um, everyone enjoyed. Oh. Um, I hope that everyone enjoyed everything and, oh, and the bunks split up between boys and girls. Yes. So half of our bunks are boys and half of our bunks are girls. And I didn't mention this before, but it's important to note there are between 12 and 16 campers in each bunk and between three and five counselors. So yes, boys and girls do not, are not together. And only girl counselors and girl bunks and boy counselors and boy bunks. And we can have any anybody who has, you know, any questions, we can definitely talk offline. Um, totally fine with that. And after the virtual open house is over, if you have any other questions, you think of anything tonight or tomorrow, please do not hesitate to contact us. You can email both of us, you can call us, uh, or you can chat me on our website. We're happy to answer questions whenever. 
So yeah, please, please do not hesitate to contact us if you have anything else. Um, someone asked, is this recorded to share with others? It is. We recorded this. We can share it with anyone. You can share it. You can email it. You can live stream it. It's Tyler not, wanted to live stream this, but I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to do it. Tomorrow, yeah. this will be posted on, um, YouTube. on YouTube and on our uh, on our website under the virtual open house page. So it'll be really easy to share if you have anybody else that might be interested in camp or you want to show another family member. But yes, it will be recorded and posted. Yeah. So I think... Um, well, I think we are going to, well, I'm going to pause the recording. Let's say goodbye. And then um, I think, yeah, I think we're going to say goodnight. I think um, there is one family on here that I know I, I, that we're chatting with about connecting later so they can stay on for a minute and we can chat. But if there aren't any more questions, then we're happy to say goodnight. So, um Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yeah.